Hey everybody, how's it going? Chris here. Um, again, awesome lunch hour haul, I guess a little bit. It's very small, very short. I want to make this video quick, but basically want to give you guys an update kind of what's going on with me and uh, and other certain things. Um, so first, I just want to show you guys um, a couple things for Logan, basically. Um, we went to, there's this new Lego store in um, Edmonton, Alberta, in... in yeah, in, in the south side of it, so big Lego store. So we decided, hey, he likes Lego and things like that. He's really getting into it. So we decided to go and get him some stuff. So this is the one that he um, first chose. Of course, I can't show you guys the Lego right now because he we've built him up a couple times and then destroyed. So, so but uh, anyways, um, this is a really neat one. So here's the box with uh, this uh, shield kind of chase chase scene. It's called, I can't remember, Marvel's The Avengers. Anyway, so it comes with uh, Iron Man, Loki, and Hawkeye, and this shield truck. And there's, uh, you know, it's kind of like he's got the Tesseract, um, and Iron Man's chasing him. It's a really cool truck. Um, so you've got this little, it's not really that much of a thing, but this little flip feature on the back, so you know, you can kind of flip and knock uh, Loki out of the back. Uh, so they're pretty good. With these little Legos, though, I found, though, the helmets, the hair and the helmets on these new Legos, well, this particular set, anyways, um, the hair or helmets really don't stick on very well. Like, you shake them around, they'll fall off, so um, I'm sure all this is going to be getting lost soon enough. Okay, so you got that one. There was also some other Lego magnet we got, like a Spider-Man was actually a Lego guy, and then he was on a big round magnet, and then he put it on the fridge. I don't know where that is, but but yeah, we got that. Um, so then the other one got him this one. The um, so like I say, he picked out the shield truck one, and I kind of <laughs> said, let's get this one, um, of course for him. But uh, just because I was like, oh cool, it's Wolverine, I should get him that one too. So, um, but yeah, so this uh, helicopter comes with Deadpool, a couple of swords. Um, and uh, Magneto, Wolverine, and a motorbike, and that was the same price as as the other one as well too. So pretty neat. So same thing. The the hair, uh, and the helmets they fall off really easy. Uh, the Magneto is pretty cool. I like the Loki and the uh, and the Magneto. The little kind of I don't know, not really paper, but it's a little harder than paper. It kind of feels like a really hard, thick, um, almost unrippable paper uh, for the capes. But those are those are really cool. So got them those, and then also um, picked this up at the same, uh, well, it was, I think days before, a week before, or something like that. Anyways, the uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, got it for Logan. Um, he likes the Spider-Man. I particularly didn't really overly enjoy this Amazing Spider-Man movie, but it finally went down to they had this blow at sale. Here's a blue, that's uh, three discs. So you got... You know, the special features, the Blu-ray feature, and then the DVD. But it finally went down to $15. Regular price at Walmart was um, 35 bucks. So I got it for 15 That's probably as cheap as you're going to find it for quite a while. Um, so I decided, you know, okay, it's finally worth it now. But it certainly wasn't worth it 30 or 40 bucks. Certainly is not worth it. But, you know, and, and Logan, like most of it, kind of, starts falling asleep after a while sort of thing you know getting towards the end and he's had enough but um you know likes kind of like the lizard stuff basically kind of likes i think the lizard more than the spider-man in here i don't know he kind of enjoys it anyways but i'm saying it's not the best movie though and he likes the toilet scene where the lizard jumps out of the or comes out of the sewer and, and up through the toilet in the school he wanted to see that scene over and over again um and also hey you guys i'm wearing my tube because up here in canada you know we're we're starting to put the ice in now too. So this this whole week we've been uh, at the arena putting the ice in, and we just kind of finished most of the lines today. Um, and we got next week a hockey camp, and there is a, a an NHL player that's coming for the hockey camp. So you know that should be pretty pretty cool too for for all the kids at the camp. Um, but yeah, so that's why the two it's already that kind of season. It's like early August. Yeah. Okay, so before I show these uh, comics here, there's only four of them. Uh, just a quick reminder, you guys, it's going by very quick. Um, the comic book Lotto 2013 is going very well. We're up to, with Rob's 
um, entries that he's, he's doing for, for people, for these winnings that he's doing. We have up to $75 in the pot. That's amazing, you guys. And a lot of newer guys are entering too. Um, so I, I know there's a lot of um, people that entered last year that are kind of still, I know, kind of waiting on it. A couple of them said, you know, okay, okay, well, you know, how much time do I got? I might enter. So that'd be really great if you guys did. Uh, we got only a few more weeks at the end of August. That's the last last day. So we're already in August. These couple last couple weeks are probably going to go real fast. So if you guys want to get in, please <laughs> jump in there. Send me the money, um, and we'll get uh, you know get over hundred dollars. That'd be really great, and uh, get somebody some some really really awesome comic books. Um, I really I really enjoy doing that for people. So um, yeah, so go enter Comic Lotto 2013. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, let's just get on. There's only four here. Again, just opened them so I haven't read them. But uh, a must, some must titles for me here. So we have the Superior Spider-Man, issue number 14. And me, I like Humberto Ramos. He's going to, you know, for me, he's a favorite artist on Spider-Man. Dan Slott writing. This should be, uh, the current storyline, too, has been pretty fascinating. So Superior Spider-Man, awesome. I think it's a it's a staple in, in the comic uh in comic collecting, I think. I think it's it's a must-have for me. Um, and, yeah, so going on another great uh, book here, I think. Issue number 33 of Wolverine and the X-Men, written by Jason Aaron. He knows how to write Wolverine, um, so I just love it. And, I don't know, it looks really interesting on the cover. I don't know if that's a, a Krakoa or something. I'm not sure. Looks pretty cool. Who's doing the artwork? Bradshaw. Yeah, Bradshaw's. Bradshaw's doing the artwork there too. Of course, I'm a Wolverine fan. That's that's a must for me. And you know, in the, in the next while, I'm probably going to be limiting, again, limiting some of my comics, and uh, just really making more, um, really strong conscious choices of of what I'm picking up. Um, so here's another one. Cool. I li I like this cover. It looks really awesome. Um, so by uh, Cornell and Pierfa da Ricci. I don't know how to say that. Uh, but here we have issue number seven of Wolverine. Um, this particular storyline, they're kind of, I don't know who borrowed what, but anyways, like in the Wolverine movie, um, they're exploring um, Wolverine not being able to heal as he normally does. So, and it was like these little microverse aliens kind of, kicked his healing factor in the ass uh, right at the end of the last issue so this is this should be an enjoyable but I think it's kind of a a ploy to kind of plug into the movie of sorts you know because in the Wolverine they had that storyline so they're kind of exploring here but of course in a very different way but um, same kind of thing so really cool cover and the last one I wouldn't have gone this one except for what I saw on the cover and some of the ads that I saw in some books so I don't know how many more of these I'll get I've only collected the first, I think it was only the first issue of this series, um, and now I'm grabbing it at issue number 10, because of the, I saw the cover in one of the ads, one of the books I was flipping through, and I figured this is a must for me. Um, Uncanny Avengers issue number 10, uh, this Apocalypse Twins storyline, I take it, but uh, these bringing a few of these people back from the dead. Uh, Dawkin, of course, um, and I really have to go back. I missed out on some of the Uncanny X-Force because I was saving up for, I think, my son's birthday and for the con earlier this year. So I stopped collecting Uncanny X-Force for a little while, figuring I'd pick up again. But, of course, it's taking a long time to pick those up. But Dawkin eventually appeared back in that title, and then his father killed him. Um, I can't remember when or how Grim Reaper died. I might have seen it because I remember some comics quite a while ago that I had, that I was getting with Grim Reaper in it. But I can't remember how he died. Um, Sentry, he's coming back. That's a big thing, I think, right right now, too. That's a big thing in the comics uh, for him to come back. He died in during the siege. I think it was the siege. Thor, I think, killed him, and he was just going crazy as the Void. Um, so Thor eventually killed him. Banshee, I don't know what issue, but I read that he was smashed between two airplanes, and that's how he died. Uh, and Dawkins was drowned by his father, Wolverine. 
Um, so I really wanted to see how they're coming back, and I'll eventually go back and get the, the Uncanny X-Force issues we're talking about. But this should be really interesting, and in seeing if these characters are going to stay alive um, again. That's going to be interesting. So that's about that. Uh, one more thing, just about me, I guess. Um, I made some. I'm making some sales on um, eBay, so I am taking looking through a lot of my collection. I've sold a few things already online. Um, I'll probably eventually show you guys some stuff that you know you might want to buy or whatever. I'll show you some stuff that I'm selling. I've already sold um, yeah a few comics, and uh, today I made a big sale, uh, a collectible that I had since 2004. I finally decided to list on eBay and sale it. Um, so that's going to somebody in Hawaii, and that would be my one-to-one -one, um, scale prop replica of the Hellboy hand from the 2004 movie. Um, exactly the same kind of replica as, as you know, Ron Perlman would have used in the movie. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that finally went. Uh, I figured I was, a few years ago I missed out on seeing Mike McNoll at one con and I would have gotten him to sign it but I don't think I'll ever meet him again and that would that would have been the only way I really, really would have held on to it if I got Mike McNoll to, to hold on to it so I sold it for a profit of course and you know at a price that I was okay with it's sad to see you know an, an awesome uh, precious treasure like that of mine to to go but um, hopefully that person's going to enjoy it just like I did and um, like I said I get something out of it basically I'm taking all uh, the money that I uh, the profit that I'm getting from it and um, going to be paying for some things for, for my son's birthday coming up in September um, so it was uh, really heavy it was just under 20 pounds and costed $85 Canadian to send so <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, so I think that's about that, you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Maybe you guys can give me some input back on what you saw here. Um, and uh, yeah, 2013, Comic Lotto, enter. And I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye.